a lot of research uh, was being done, kind of not really known to the general public, about gender differences very, very early in life, sometimes prenatally. And that was, at that time, in the late 1990s and early 2000s, there was uh, beginning a certain awareness that boys were not doing well. There was something that was referred to as the boy crisis. The indicators were uh, not doing well in the educational systems. Not all boys, of course, but many. Uh, not, to, not finishing high school, not, uh, not going on to college. Uh, some other indicators were uh, certain psychological problems that manifested in ADHD, which we became aware of uh, around then, and also autism, which is uh, both of which are predominantly male uh, psychopathologies, as they're called. So I knew that the picture I, I, had an, I, I couldn't have articulated this at the time, in the early two, 2000s, but I knew that there were all these pieces to it that needed to be understood. And so I took myself off to graduate school and did um, a doctorate on this subject, basically, trying to orient all my research to, to understanding boys. It occurred to me that uh, this would be an interesting thing to focus on for a year, and I did that. And I went back to Zero to Three, and I, I led a, um, a, a, a panel on boys in early life and some of the unique vulnerabilities. And one of the people who attended that panel, someone I later became quite close to uh, in this area, and his name is uh, Hiram Fitzgerald. He uh, is a professor of psychology at Michigan State. And I invited Hiram and the other people who were uh, on the panel to come. And I said, what, what's a good activity for a, conference, for, a, for a foundation to do? And uh, I got a lot of ideas, but Hiram especially came up with the notion of doing a conference on boys at risk, indicators from zero to five, that was the title. And, and Hiram was terrific at, at helping me invite people uh, who we both thought would be good for this, um, for this topic. So that was how we got the first one. <clears throat> we had this conference and we had, uh, we had, it had three different subtopics. One topic had to do with biology, Another had to do with longitudinal research. I discovered that there was quite a bit of research out there that um, followed boys from prenatal period till they were 20, 30 years old, and you know tried to relate what was learned early on to certain behavioral outcomes later. The conference ended. I thought it was quite successful. A couple of months later, the Infant Mental Health Journal came out, the special issue, and was on the website. And uh, even the New York Times and the Atlantic had uh, run uh, articles about uh, some of the topics that were dealt with uh, during the conference. So I thought, like, we'd really done something special, but I didn't know what the next one would be, and I was kind of looking for inspiration. Actually, the inspiration came two days after the conference ended, I opened up the Santa Fe New Mexican and there was a letter there about men and violence. And it was a very interesting letter, very um, angry and um, judgmental letter, I thought, and not a letter that showed uh, much sympathy to the issue or much understanding of the complexity of the issue. An idea was sort of triggered uh, in that, and um, but it seemed to me like a complex proje project to uh, initiate and one I needed some help with. So I went to one of the speakers from our um, first conference, uh, a professor at the University of Pittsburgh named Daniel Shaw, who had done uh, a longitudinal study of boys from very early in childhood until uh, the 20s, following the uh, 
their trajectories uh, to see which of those children later as adult, uh, adolescents and adults became violent. And I asked him if he would help me recruit some people for a meeting in La Jolla, California, where we would sit around a table and discuss the viability of this topic and the, the, whether it made sense to, uh, to talk about the early origins of male violence. And uh, out of that, I had enough of a sense of confirmation that this was a doable uh, subject. The second conference <clears throat> will take place also in Santa Fe uh, in May, on May uh, 1st through 3rd at the Santa Fe Convention Center. And, um, uh, and that, the topic of that is the uh, early origins of male violence. There'll be a publication, which is the Infant Mental Health Journal, a special issue of the Infant Mental Health Journal that'll come out in January uh, 2019. The conference will follow that five months later in May 2019. And the vehicle for organizing all of this is the Santa Fe Boys Educational Foundation. Uh, what we know of the predecessors, in general, the predecessors of uh, early violent behavior. There'll be another uh, segment that has to do with interventions and uh, ways to try to deal with the problem of male violence that results from early uh, issues. And the third will be a policy discussion about the need for policy changes. Males are, re males are significantly responsible for most of the violence in society. Approximately 90% of those incarcerated in federal and state prisons are males. Those incarcerated for violent acts are males. So uh, one of the papers I wrote early on was in the, was, was in the zero to three publications and I talked about three factors that are particularly um, uh, unique to boys. One is that they are slower to develop. They generally have a slower developmental timetable. Um, in addition to that, there are problems with boys' tendency to externalize frustration. Um, boys are much more likely to have uh, psychopathologies that relate to uh, acting out, and such as ADHD, uh, often seen in the classroom. Uh, those, I think, in general would fall into the category, broadly, of psychological issues. But there are also biological issues that boys seem to be more vulnerable as a result of. And some of those have to do with um, testosterone. Some of those have to do with um, certain genetic uh, issues that boys confront. When we talk about the social environment, we need to talk about not only poverty and inequality, but also how these affect family structure. And there has been a fairly significant change in the last, I would say, 30 to 40 years where um, single parent families have come to uh, be a, quite a significant part of the population. And I, one of the things through the study of this phenomenon, which is uh, often studied as what is known as the fragile family, uh, one of the significant outcomes that we are learning is that uh, it affects boys and girls differently and seems to have a particularly negative outcome on boys. Uh, th there's something more, you know, there's a more, uh, a much more complicated dynamic here and that it needs to inform policy. It needs to inform the kind of interventions we have. It needs to inform the kinds of preschool programs that we uh, have for children. I'll go into that just a, one, a little further, and that is um, New Mexico, uh, for example, a state that the foundation is located in, um, 
has a uh, history of, uh, of uh, kicking children out of preschool for behavioral problems. A study was done in 2005 uh, by a professor at the Yale um, Child Study Center showing that New Mexico uh, was the worst state in the United States for uh, kicking kids out of preschool and that boys predominated. 80% of those dismissed were boys with behavioral problems. Okay, the, the Santa Fe Boys Educational Foundation it exists uh, to, to, to create a, an environment to discuss, to understand boys, to, to foster research and promote programs to address the, this growing awareness that boys early in life um, have particular needs which, uh, which, if we wish to avoid these later problems, need to be addressed in those early years, prenatal to, say, age five. Uh, that is the main focus of uh, the Santa Fe Boys Educational Foundation, and the idea is to create situations where these issues can be discussed and brought to public attention. So we are having conferences, we are publishing special issues of the Infant Mental Health Journal. Um, and, um, and if we see, I mean, I'm also very interested, if someone were to come to me and say, boy, I'd like to start a preschool for boys that would be particularly sensitive to some of the problems that they have, the foundation would be interested in that kind of program as well, supporting it and, um, and, and research for it. Um, so. So that, in a broad brush, is what, what, what the Foundation is trying to do.